It is the duty of the free man to resist tyranny at every turn. Every man will either watch his freedom stripped away or take action to protect what he loves. Introducing the A3, the newest revolutionary body armor from Armored Republic. The A3 is the new standard for lightweight multi-hit body armor. A3 plates are incredibly light at 4.6 pounds. The patented design captures fragmentation while remaining multi-hit capable. The A3 will stop up to M80 ball, yet comes in at only 0.7 inches thick. The A3 is the thinnest NIJ.06 compliant or certified composite standalone plate that includes the drop test. The A3 is the first of its kind, patent pending, that combines an alloy strike face with polyethylene backing, revolutionizing body armor technology by providing strength and durability while remaining sleek and maneuverable. The A3 is the new standard in lightweight body armor. The fight against tyranny just got stronger. Hey y'all, welcome to Cost Politics. It's beer and psalm, psalms, psalm, Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're Wanna, still working on that. Still working on that. It's Wednesday. <laughs> Pastor Toby Chuck Knox, I'm the water boy. It's good to be with you on the Fight Lab Feast Network. Hey, do you have a podcast or are you thinking about starting one? I think one? we do. We have one. We have we, one. We should look into this. Yeah. This adds for us, Gabe. Mm. Does your church have a podcast feed or maybe you, you put one out, you, you have one for sermons? Then dropwave.io is for you. Listen carefully, Gabe. Mm -hmm. Cancel culture is like walking on a thin glass bridge over the Grand Canyon. It's true. It's true. (laughs) Oh man, I'm this, 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 this ad. Yeah, it is. <laughs> this, it is. Yeah. Did you write this? It's game? a great ad. I did. Every, yeah. No, it's a great ad. <laughs> every step you take could get you killed. I mean, canceled. Since the beginning, Cross Politic has been working on being anti fragile. So no matter what happens, our content can still be delivered to your TV, to your podcast feed. This so past important. year, the Water Boy and his friend Jeremy have been working on building a podcast hosting solution for rowdy platforms like Cross Politic and your podcast so that you can be confident that your podcast will never fall through that glass bridge. <laughs> Dropwave <laughs> offers seamless onboarding for shows that have been around for years <laughs> to easy to use solutions for starting your own podcast today. Dropwave will track all your shows downloads by city, state and country and it offers network and enterprise packages for solutions like the Fight Laugh Feast network for example. Free to speak, free to podcast free to start your journey now at www.dropwave.io that's dropwave.io so good um <laughs> I, I didn't i didn't talk about this but i'm going to i guess it's live now so Knox unplugged yeah, event it first Knox unplugged event is live event be, like in uh, a yes, city yes, Knox unplugged in live. the city and it's going to be Knox as, unplugged live, live. yes yeah. right. it's going to be as unplugged as the show itself so yeah. it's going to be a, not really a, I just found out about it on Twitter today yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, thanks for listening to the show. That was exciting. Uh, <laughs> I was like, wow. Yeah. Well, I think we it's, got, it's in Nashville. So we didn't let, make the page go live immediately. We yeah. waited to kind of just get the, the Knox listeners to see if they wanted to go in first. And so we got kind of got them. And it's only 50 people. Only 50 people. Only 50 people. people. Yeah. And so the base, so the, the whole point of it is everything in the world right now seems to be upside down. And people don't know why. And a lot of it is rooted in cosmology. Actually, mm-hmm. all of it is rooted in cosmology. We have people who are using secular cosmological arguments, thinking that they're Christian and then getting everybody to fight about the world that the secularists have already claimed. (laughs) And so the whole goal with this event is to try and reposition the way that we understand the way God has made the world so that we can think about it rightly and not take the bait of the arguments of this, of even the Christians who are thinking like secularists. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot, it's a lot of work. We've been trying to do it a lot on Knox Unplugged and then apply it to other areas. So, So you and Jason Farley? Me, Jason Farley, um, David Fowler. So we're going to bring the legality into yeah, it, law yeah, into it right, um, right. with him. And then George Grant, too. Oh, yeah. And I just heard Doug Tenaple's going to be there. He, I might just toss him up there as well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he got somebody on like, the art, on the artistic side of yeah, things. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, what he's doing is showing the answer to the problem, which is kind of some of the things I want to talk about today. Um, to, it's been I, I l- take a break very suddenly from the news. And because I was in Nashville uh, at Jason um, Whitlock's conference, Mm -hmm. the roll call, I took a little break from the news and I 
I start seeing things. Yeah, we fly noticed. Up. We, no- we noticed because because we were here. <laughs> you guys, by the way, and 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 you weren't you guys, here. It was you guys did some phenomenal shows. I just got to tell you, thank you so much. As I was watching them, yeah. but as you had to say that, though. I get up. No, I don't actually. I would have told you that was trash. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's true. He, he would have told us. Told you. No, what were you fair doing? Enough. What were you fair thinking? Enough, fair Absolutely. Enough. I should have never gone live. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, what were you thinking? Uh. No, but I ha- so I get the updates still of all the news stories and it just seems like everything has gone absolutely bonkers Mm. and i was like guys we need to do a show on what to do when the world goes insane Mm. and i think that i don't think that christians have come to understand the reality of the situation right now of the world Mm. aaron wren did a really good job of talking about the positive neutral and negative um disposition of christianity in american society and so you got this positive side where if you're a christian it's Look favorably. Hmm. If you're and then you got this neutral point in time in society where, hey, you know, it's not positive or negative, but we don't mind. We'll let you go. And now where he believes we're in this negative side where it is absolutely not a good thing to be a Christian in American society. It's a strike against you. It it is a strike against you and get ready. And I think he's absolutely right. And one of the things that that kind of broke the camels uh, back, the last straw that broke the camels back for me was the the trans shooting in Nashville. Hmm. It's not that it was we don't have bad guys out there. It was the type of setup that it was that let me know that Christian spaces are no longer off the table. Right. And, and we started seeing some of this with some of the bombings in Alabama and other things like that. But this one was the last one where it's like kind of out of the way, Presbyterian private school. Right. The the real victim. Yeah. And according to the press afterwards, that's the biggest thing was the shooter. That's the biggest thing. Nobody felt like that when that uh, I can't remember exactly the the, the town, but that one white kid bummed the black church. Everybody knew who the bad guy was was in uh, South Carolina. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knew who the bad guy was and that it was wrong and shame on him. That wasn't the tone this time, though. Right. Right. And so this one was different because the tone with the sympathy was with the the perpetrator, (laughs) Mm -hmm. not the victim. And it made me think, guys, as Christians, we have to not just have our environments become hard targets, but we ourselves need to think more like hard targets in every area, every environment. If you're a man, you need to be carrying a gun. If you walk in out there, you are responsible for your family and the people around you. You need to be carrying. You need to be responsible with how to protect them. You need to know the environment and how to engage. And just this past weekend, one of the things that started pointing to the insanity even more so of what's happening is what happened in Chicago. They call it teen takeover. Okay. And so in Chicago, this whole thing took place over the weekend. Hundreds of teens and young adults were seen running in traffic on Michigan Avenue in the loop, jumping on vehicles and smashing windows. Saturday night, two teens were shot. A 16-year-old in the arm, a 17-year-old in the leg. How's your husband? Is he okay? I don't know. I'm from Chicago, and I understand kids having a good time, but it's definitely bad parenting. We have to do better as parents. Oh. Our kids should not be out here. Where are their parents at? That's my question. No loitering. Please disperse. No loitering. Please disperse. Wow. You, you don't, everybody. <laughs> that looked like a peaceful protest. Uh, yeah, mostly. That, mostly, mostly, yeah. Peaceful. mostly. Mostly peaceful. Mostly peaceful. Yeah. And so I, everybody is seeing this and everybody's pointing to, oh, this is a family problem. And it's like, I'm glad that they can say that, but none of them have any answers on what that looks right. like then to fix it. Right. And so there's a couple things. And Pastor, you just wrote an article, um, what, how, to po- how, to parenting, how to parent kids in a POMO sexual, sexual. World? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Yeah. I think I got close to the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I wanted to pair that along with this because there's three different fears out here right now. I think there's the fear of violence, which is what we're seeing in the streets. Mm-hmm. I think there's a fear of technology. What are we creating that's going to imprison us? And then that's kind of connected with the government as yeah. well. TikTok. TikTok and all, yeah. yeah, and the government's watching you and all this stuff like that. Okay. And then the fear of sexuality and the transgender stuff. Yeah. I think that those are the three big fears. And say it one more time. The, the fear of violence, violence so which I, is what we're just physical violence. What you just saw there and the shootings in Nashville, yeah. stuff like that. Fear of technology, fear of technology and government tech, technocrat, yeah. AI, technocracy, AI, 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 social media, yeah, yeah. Social yeah. phones, yeah. Yeah. And, all that. And then fear of sexuality. Yeah. Right. That those are the breakdowns. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and, the and trans and LGBT jihad. Right. And okay. and one of the things that was really interesting um, with. Jason Whitlock's conference was that there were 800 men there. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah. 800 men. And 
all these men feel this type of pressure pushing in on them. Yeah, what do we do? And they don't know what to do. Yeah, what do you do when the world's gone mad? Yeah, and Jason, yeah. I, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the things that he talked about. He had three things that he left them with that I thought was really, really, really good. He wanted them to identify as Christians on their social media pages. And let me preface this. with he, He's really thinking about self-government. Mm-hmm. Right. The first thing he attacked after all this was self-government. You know, it, be, how, a, how, be a Christian. How, be a Christian. How you identify as a Christian. Um, listen to gospel music every morning. Right. So that if you listen to something else or secular, you vomit it up because you're so full of, of gospel music. Right. Let, let God's word dwell in you richly. Right. Yeah. And then the last one was talk about Jesus every day. And so I, I thought hmm. those were really good. Three hmm. good pieces. I don't even know if he intended to do this, but I, was, I wanted to kind of take those and. Noxify them. Like, <laughs> That's a verb. That's a verb. Yeah. yeah Noxify them. Noxify them. Noxify them. And, and, uh, in Texas, we say fix them. Well, okay. <laughs> well, we ain't in Texas. Uh, but you have, we, we need to remember as Christians that we have been bought with the price by the blood of Christ and we have been washed and purified. That's baptism. Mm-hmm. Your mm-hmm. baptism is marks mm-hmm. you out, and yeah. God says you are mine. Right. His name is on His you. Name Identify is on as you. a Christian, yeah. right? So your identity isn't something that you get to give yourself. Right, mm-hmm. it's something that God has given you and placed on you. Right. So for, that's the first thing. Remember your baptism, and then you already took the second one, which is like listen to gospel music. That's great. I like that. You can listen to some Psalms, Brian Sauvé's album. Yeah, really good. But ultimately, you want the Word of God to dwell in you in such a way. That when something happens or takes place or any conversation, wherever conflict or good, you have a Bible verse that rises to the mm-hmm. top of your mind immediately. Right. So that you know you have wisdom on the situation. You know how to govern it. You know how it relates to God's law. And you know how to think about it in a way that brings life and not death, punishes evil, yeah. and rewards good. You think about things in such a way that the scripture comes to the top of your mind. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing is just evangelism. Yeah. It's a great commission. Right. 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 And and tell someone about Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. Right. But that's you're supposed to be and, making disciples. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's, tell, tell your kids about Jesus. <laughs> tell your kids. <laughs> Where's the closest yeah. disciple at? Yeah. Right. The closest disciple right. are the ones that you've made. Right. <laughs> literally mm-hmm. with your wife. Mm-hmm. And and when I thought about that, I was like, okay, that's self government. That's thinking about the individual responsibility. But Pastor, your article took it all the way around to where I think the second place is, which is the family. Mm-hmm. The family. All governments have to fall apart in order to see the kind of things that we see in our society where there's fear in violence, fear of sexuality, and fear of tech, yep. right? All the governments have to break down, and particularly, though, the family government and the church government. And what you did in your article was bring it all back together and say, here's where you focus on in order to be able to rebuild society properly. That's how I yeah. started to read your article. Yeah. But you started, which is the most interesting thing, you started with faith and fear. Why? Right. Yeah, I was, I mean, this was, um, so this is a, these are notes actually just from a presentation that I no gave. No way. Yeah. It's just notes? They're just notes. It was, I mean, you I call it, you, you called it an article and I was uh, like, wow, and thank you, Knox. I, I, I thought it was an um, article. Well, it says it at the top there, notes for King's Cross I don't, I don't, it, no, it's, Special Men's Forum. It's so small. It's like right down in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really below the title, but it's so small. <laughs> Subtitle. Um, Good notes. So, but, but yeah, so we just, we just did a special men's meeting actually um, for King's Cross on um, this last Sunday night and it was on... Um, Raising Your Children in a, in a uh, Pomosexual World. And we actually read Pastor Doug's book, Pomosexuality, the, the men did. And that was sort of background. And we just wanted to have, we, we do a monthly men's reading group in church, but this month we just wanted to focus on both kind of um, protecting your children, their purity mm. um, in a sexualized world, but then also protecting them from, um, from deviants and predators right. in a sexualized world. Mm. So sort of both sides of that. Um, and so I, I made a few comments and actually pastor Doug came and he made a few comments as well. Um, both of those are recorded by the way, and I think they'll be out um, pretty soon. So well, that can't. wasn't in the art. Uh, um, that, yeah, mean, so yeah. it's, it's coming out sometime. Um, but, um, but uh, yeah, I, I begin here. I begin this way whenever I talk about parenting period, faith and fear, faith hmm. and fear. Hmm. Um, because I think your heart and your mindset affect everything else. Hmm. And so you could have, you could read the book, you know, Doug's parenting books or someone else's really good parenting books and all the check, you know, all the boxes to check, you know, when to spank and how to correct and you know, this kind of stuff. But if you're doing it in fear, mm-hmm. I think it's, it's, it's not going to work. Uh, and I think in many cases, it's going to make it worse. Mm. If, if you're driven by terror, anxiety, trepidation, 
that you're about to lose everything. You're about to lose your kids. Um, everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Violence. Uh, uh, if, if you're driven by fear, yep. um, then you're going to be driven by your decisions are going to be made off that, ev- that calculation. And everything is right. colored by it. Right. And it's like, you're desperate and you're going to be demanding yeah. and you're going to be accusing and you're going to be bitter and you're going to be resentful because everything is like, ah, and you're going to be freaking out and you're either going to, you know, pop off in one way or you're going to be like just depressed and, and coming, you know, walking around everywhere and with a cloud of darkness. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so I begin here because yeah, I mean, and, and look around you, there's plenty to look to see. Right. There's plenty right. to see that is terrifying. There's a really right. interesting line in um first Peter three, particularly for women where it says, um, it, it, it says um, there, it calls upon women um, uh, to be like Sarah. It says in, in how you submit to your own husbands and be like Sarah um, who obeyed her husband, Abraham, calling him Lord. And it says, whose daughters you are, um, if you do good, um, not being afraid of anything terrifying. Mm. And, and it's really striking mm. because, because it actually recognizes that there's things that are terrifying. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't deny that there are terrifying things. It just right. says you need to do good and not be afraid of those things right. that are terrifying. And the way that a woman does that in particular is she emulates Sarah's faith <laughs> in obedience to her husband mm-hmm. in, mm. in trusting that the man that God has given you is the man that God has given you for your good. Mm. And so, and so you, you, you rest in him right before that is when it says, you know, don't, don't make your adorning all on the outside, the braiding of hair and the jewelry, but let your adorning primarily in the first instance, be a quiet, a gentle and quiet spirit, which is in God's sight of great price or great mm. value. God sees that you resting in him, adorning your heart with a gentle and quiet spirit. Um, and God sees that and it's valuable to him and he protects it as a woman trusts in God and does good and isn't afraid of anything terrifying. But I think this applies to men too, because men are, men will be scared of things yeah. and, yeah. and, and they, um, and in our fear, I think frequently we get angry mm-hmm. in our fear. We're afraid we're losing a child or fear that something bad is happening. And, and we are given to angry outbursts yeah. where we are given to clamping down. Yeah. That's it. Gonna, You're not going I was out. Say control. Yeah, yeah. Control. Like yeah. give me back all your phones. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you can't go out. You can have any friends. You're staying yeah. home. We, we do things like that yeah. um, and, and and think that that's helping and it only makes things worse. Right. That's right. And, and so instead of these things, the answer is faith in the promises of God. And, and so um, Malachi 4, the end of our English Old Testament, closes with the promise that God is going to come and he's going to turn the hearts of fathers to the children and the hearts of children to the yes. fathers, mm. lest he come and strike the earth with a curse. Luke's gospel opens up and Luke says this is talking about John the Baptist. He's the one who's come to prepare the way for the one, God, yeah. who will turn the hearts of fathers to the children, the mm. hearts of children to the fathers. So we know who the prophecy was talking about. That's right. Talking right. about Jesus. Yep. And he came, and he came and he took that curse. And it's the curse of Adam, and it's the curse that's in all our families. It's the curse of your dad. It's the curse of your mm. granddad. It's the curse of your mom or your grandma. Or whatever they did to you, however they failed you, however they let you down, however they sinned, that yeah. curse— Jesus took, he was pierced on the cross for that curse, for the curse that you have continued to perpetuate in your own sins and your own failures and the curse that resides in your kids. Mm. Mm. Jesus took it in order to turn the hearts of fathers to children and the hearts of children to their fathers. And so if before we even start talking about parenting, wow. we have to start there. Okay. Who's right. Okay. The, 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 um, the rioting teenagers in Chicago, yeah. the LGBT jihad, by fear. the World Health Organization, yeah. Come on you now. Know, whoever, you it, is, preach, whoever it is that you think is after you and your kids, you need to hold that up AI. to yeah. Yeah, AI, TikTok, rampant pornography, That's yeah. right. you know, just this, all the stuff, or the, the God man who was crucified in order to take away all of it and turn the hearts of children to fathers and fathers to children. Mm. One of these things is not like the other. Mm. <laughs> yeah, which one do you believe? I mean, right? but, yeah, yeah. But, I'm about to throw my beer can at that but, board if but, I can't get an uh, organ oh over my here. Who, I, I'm who, stunned. Who are you going to believe? And but that but the thing is, is when when yeah. when parenting that is governed by fear creates a home and an atmosphere full of tension. Mm-hmm. That's full right. of anxiety. That's right. Full of frustration, full of accusation, uh, all of these things. A home that is that has the dominance of faith 
in the gospel of Jesus Christ and all the promises of God. And there's way more promises about God and what how he's for us and for our children and for our grandchildren. Um, that home that is dominated by faith is a place fundamentally characterized by relief. Mm. Just relief. And, and ability to think because but, they have right, the peace. Right, yeah, yeah. There's no, it's, it's, not, it's not churning. It's, it's joy. It's, yeah. not, it's not anxiety. It's not fear. It's relief. Your sins are forgiven. He is for you. He, he, uh, God, if God is for us, mm. what can stand against us? Romans 8. Mm. It, it, it says, but, but it keeps going. It says, for he who did not spare his own son, yeah. but gave him, him up for us all, how will he not with him also give us all things? That's right. Right? And and how would that all things not include all yeah. things? Your kids. <laughs> right? I mean, like, yeah. you know, I mean all things. Yeah. But if like, the nations are included, but, then <laughs> you know, at the top of the list is like the the, right. the you know, children are a heritage from the Lord. Yeah. Right. Like the things that you know, they are God's inheritance. That's right. The children are his. And he gives them to us First Corinthians 7. for Come a period of time to care for, but they all belong to him. They're his inheritance. They're his reward. And, and so how will he not with him give us all things? How would that not include our kids? But, but again, if that's the promise of God, that has to loom way, way over the dangers. That's right. The fears. That's right. And so your home should be characterized by relief, joy, laughter, mm -hmm. rest, um, Dancing, stories, creative writing, joy. You know, I keep saying uh, joy. Uh, yeah, laughter, <laughs> yeah. dancing. I'm, I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Food, good food. <laughs> yeah, um, like that. that yeah. So the, an aroma of righteousness. The, and I and I would just think, like in in some ways, if this is all you had, and we just stopped there, and you didn't have the rest of what I, I have six more yeah, points yeah, yeah, in yeah. here, you didn't know anything about spanking, you mm -hmm. didn't know anything about. Anything else? Right. If all you had was this, mm. we'd be all right. Mm. Yeah. America would be in a better place. Mm -hmm. we'd, we'd be yeah. all right. That, that, that's like, right. Well, I would. I, right. I, I, like, I think no, all of them are encompassed. No, in it this is. One it thing. is. Yeah, but it, you're right. It, but but I'm just saying, like, this is the fertile soil that's in which right. obedience and life grows. And blessing. It's yeah. faith mm -hmm. in God. That's, I mean, that's, this is why, you know, the Reformation was. This was the call. Mm -hmm. It's faith alone. Plus That's nothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you have nothing. You said, but I don't have anything else. I don't know how yeah. to raise children. Well, <laughs> here's the good news of the gospel. Just believe. <laughs> That's right. I don't know what I'm doing. Great. You qualify. Come on now. You better. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and frankly, we live in the kind of place where people are so um, chasing after the fads of how to fix this, how to do this, <laughs> that what we need right now is a whole bunch of gospel preachers that are just going to say, stop it. Yep. That's stop right. it. That's you, need, right. you need to recognize that like, we need you to stop trying. Ugh. Please stop. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> stop that. You're messing it up. You're messing <laughs> it up. Like every, you know, like you're going to all the doctors, like the sick woman in, in yeah. the gospels and you're only making it worse. Right. Um, but uh, that's, that's the, that's the bottom line. And I just, and I just think that too, the thing is in terms of protecting your kids, this is not just a hide your head in the sand, like a, you know, ostrich kind of thing. Right. Actually, this is where the light is. The light yeah, of the gospel right. shines here in relief, in the forgiveness of sins, and that creates a kind of greenhouse effect mm -hmm. in your home. Mm. And, and here's the thing. When, when you live in this kind of rejoicing in the gospel, the forgiveness of sins, and when sin happens, you say, oh, that's a sin. Please forgive me. I forgive you. You're forgiven. And you, and you restore fellowship like that, and you live in that mm -hmm. joy and that relief. Um, it, it, it's the kind of place where... Sin doesn't fester in secret. That's right. Yeah, people don't get That's that. Right. That's so mm -hmm. true. It, it, and, and I mean, the light drives away the darkness. Yep. And the light Man. of the gospel is what does it. And it's in First John 1, it says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship right. with one another. That's right. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So that's the light. And, and that light drives away the darkness. And there's just nothing more precious than a family that forgives one another. Like that family yeah. lives with each other daily, walks with each other daily, yeah. and there's forgiveness between each other. Yeah. They forgive each yeah. other. But, but in that place, are we done? If you're single, 
<laughs> but, there, but there's more. Oh, we, oh, we didn't okay. go. We didn't go through. All right, five. I'll, I'll go, I'll there's go there's five more. Okay, because I don't know how we're gonna make it through the rest of these. We're gonna need more time. Because this is good stuff. You are loaded for bear. I love this. This is great. I'll go through the rest of it real quickly. But oh no, no, okay. Bring up slide two also. But here's but here's the thing. I just want to I want to say I'm gonna piggyback on what you're saying. Is that that's exactly right? The that that fellowship is the place where you have trust, yep. mm-hmm. where you have communication. So you start thinking about these threats, okay? Mm. The violence, technology, sexual predators, yeah. or confusion, or whatever, okay? what I mean, everybody knows this. In order to, for parents and to, to raise their children, you need to be able to communicate well. You need to have trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, and, yeah. And what happens is communication breaks down, trust breaks down. Yep. That's that's the fundamental, and that's why I say faith over fear. Mm-hmm. Because if you're starting from a position of fear, you're already not building a place of trust. You're not mm-hmm. building a place of communication, that's and right. that's where the shadows show up. And, and because and then you start building assumptions yeah, about one another. Yeah, you're not in fellowship, mm-hmm. and then yeah. and what happens that's is right. without faith and forgiveness and the fellowship in Jesus, it starts pulling people apart. That's right. Because you don't trust one another. You're not sure mom understands me. Dad mm-hmm. doesn't understand me. My wife doesn't understand me. My husband, and then that pulls people apart. Into the shadows where sin happens, yep. where the light is not shining on. Back them. to the serpent, right? And yeah. now it's now there's now there, now you start covering it up. Yep. You start pretending it away. You're ashamed. You're guilty. You start yep. lying. You're self deceived. Yep. That's how these things happen. Yeah. But, if, but if you're in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses you from all sin. You confess sins when it's little. You forgive when it's little. You you trust one another, and you mm-hmm. say, you know, you're able to talk about these things, and mm-hmm. it's not a shooting match. Yeah. It, it, that's that's why I say I think this is you know ninety five percent. Oh of the no! Whole, whole I, I was thing. gonna say I, I was gonna add add, add to this too. Add and to as it, that brother. sin kind of grows over the years, um, and you stop confessing sin to one yep. another, assumptions start building in. Yep. Where you just immediately think, oh, she did that because she did she right. sinned this way right. before in the past. Right. That's what she thinks. This that's, is how that, she is. This is how she is. Right. And so there's no real sanctification that happens in your family right. over time. Right. And so after 20 years, right. you're repeating and recycling this right. over time with your marriage and your kids. Right. And, no, and, and then there's no room for anybody to grow and right. sanctify. Right. You've right. choked out right. the very life of sanctification in your marriage. Right. Wow. Uh, and, and then it's no, it's no um, surprise right. that a whole bunch of people say, you know, I, I think I'm going to try someone else. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I think I'm gonna try something else because I've, my wife's always this way. Yeah, my husband's always this way. She's never my, gonna get better. My dad's always this way. Mm-hmm. My mom's always this way. My yeah. my family's this way, mm-hmm. and people start looking for mm-hmm. acceptance and community. Yep. somewhere else. And so what? It, and so what happens that's is you blaspheming know, God's name right there. That's yeah. right. And so yeah. so what happens is I'm, I'm I'm surprised you know, and sometimes in, uh, you you look at one of your kids and um you've been working on a problem with them and or or one of your you know daughters or sons you've been working on a problem and. And they've been confessing. They've been, you know, they've been maybe been disciplined for it, and they've been asking for forgiveness. And then over years, uh, um, all of a sudden, they stop doing it. Like God actually works in them. Yeah. And and then you still are kind of living in this old. Yeah, this is how they mi- are. Mind frame. This is how they are. I was like, oh, that actually, my son doesn't do that anymore. Right. Yeah. God's forgiven mm. him. Right. God's worked in my family in such a way. Yeah. He's where, tur- he's turned his heart. And, and so mom and dad sometimes need to catch up with the forgiveness that's that true. God's Ooh, brought. That's in, true. And that's why in, you baptize the babies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right. So I'm going to make just. No, I'm going to do. Well, yes, but I want to say that you guys moved on from one, which is faith versus so fear, to all to the way to number one. six, yeah, which yeah. is confession, forgiveness, and accountability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you guys merged those two together, which is great. I don't have a problem with that. Which is what? Where can people go listen or watch? Read this at? Well, you can read it right now at tobyjsumter.com and, and just click on blog. Okay. It's the latest blog post. It's it's called yeah parent. Raising kids in a homosexual world. Okay, I want to preface the second one though, okay. which is read the whole Bible as a family and discuss everything. Do we have the slides? And up also for everything. This now? I don't think we do. We, we didn't put them no, in. no, we just said that too. But discuss everything. That's another way of saying everything. everything. But, but no, here, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But the reason I want to preface this is because I am noticing I'm having a lot of conversation with men. And they are wed- ready to engage in battle, whatever it takes to protect these kids from the other side, right. from anybody. They're ready to right. lay down their lives and die. Navy SEALs, all kinds of military men, the average yeah. man, right? Yeah. yeah. But when you get to them, you say, all right, I want you to have family devotions every night with your family. They're like, ooh, that sounds pretty tough. Yeah. That yeah. sounds pretty hard. And right. all I can think about, there's two things that hit me. It's Naaman 
right? Yeah. <laughs> Remember, yeah. you want me to go dip in a dirty lake <laughs> seven times? Yeah. Seven times. Yeah. Yeah. I go to war thirty thousand times before I go do that. Get out here and talk to me. Yeah. Right. Um, and the idea that uh, you know, when the fullness of time had come, Christ came. Right. Like mm-hmm. so, th- th- there's this, there's this process where we forget that um, the simplest thing to do is probably the most effective thing to do. The way that God works, He sent a baby. Right. Right, right. He gave us <laughs> to a book. A, to a virgin yeah, woman right. to change the whole world. Right. It wasn't a military art. That's what Jesus talked about. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. I don't operate the same way that y'all right, do right. with the same kind of functions as critical theory. I don't operate that way. I serve and die for my people. And men are not serving and dying when it comes to yeah. rearing their families. And that's why I just wanted to preface yeah. that with, this is why that is so important. That's the first place right. that we need to be engaging in our uh, homes. And I'd push, I even push and say, if you are not reading the Bible every day with your family, you're not ready to defend them Facts. Phys- physically, mm-hmm. Facts. militarily. I don't care what kind of training you got. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't have the word of God dwelling in you richly, I don't trust you with that gun. <laughs> mm. I don't. Yeah. I, I don't trust you with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you don't so, have the body armor of God on. No, why are you going like, to put like, the body like, armor like, of man on? You, you like, know? Don't, you, don't you know what mm-hmm. you know, that kind of power does to Ben? Mm. I don't trust you with that. That's exactly what you don't like about the other. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, uh, and don't think you can't become them. I'll just in I'll your just own way. Add, add one little thing here. It, it's um, it's not the it, doing family devotions every night is good. Yes. Um. Uh. But it's it's you don't choke your family out with it. No. Um. Don't no. don't turn it. No. Go go don't go, no, go back to point one. I was say, yeah, 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 yeah. Relief. Do it because, in faith. Well, yeah. Dads dads can yeah. take that so seriously. Yeah. Uh, well, and, they should. And, Hold on. They should. I, Deuteronomy 6. But I'm saying he could take it so seriously in such a way where he's like, everyone, sit down, be quiet. Yeah. But, but I'm going to lead us to devotions. There's a warning against yeah. that, too, though. It's, but it's a, it's a get to yeah. thing. Don't, you know, don't boil the kid in its yeah, mother's that's milk. Right. That's exactly right. right. This is milk. Yeah. Right. Love the word of God yeah. like it's milk. Yeah. And so, you know, it's a it's a get to. Yeah. Not a got to. And you, when you talk about discuss everything, yeah. there's a reason that you put that on the yeah, internet. Yeah, so I was I was reading an article written by a you know nice Christian lady who's um, in the counseling world that was was talking about how to prepare your kids for the sexual temptations and threats that they're going to face in the world, and she kind of gives this long list of like ask them about this, ask them about this, and it's like a nice little list. And I realized if you read Genesis to Revelation, you covered it all. <laughs> yeah. All of it. You actually yeah. covered all it all. It. So I, mean, I was thinking, like, you start in Genesis 1 and 2, 3. Yeah. You've got, you know, there's na- they're naked. Naked. Yeah. God yeah. made them in his image. It's, they're, it's they're, naked. Ne- That's how you Texas, say it. Texas, Texas naked. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, they, you know, their bodies are good. Yeah. Um, your sexuality is good. Male yeah. and female is good. Male yeah. and female is the image of God. Yeah. Good. No shame. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and then they're one flesh. Yeah. They're married. Marriage is good. Yeah. Fruitfulness is good. This is where babies come from. That's right. Um, and then you have the fall. This is where sin comes from. This is where <laughs> sin comes yeah. from. Disobedience and disobedience leads to shame. And shame is why they need to be covered. Mm-hmm. Yes. And this is why nakedness is no longer a good thing uh-huh. unless right. you're in the privacy of your own marriage bed. Yeah. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Or the shower, whatever you know, but mm-hmm. um, but you know, but this it, you, you can explain a lot of that. Just Genesis one, two, and three, right? Yeah. Pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. But you know, just start going. Go right. through the Bible. Yep. You've got Adam and Eve know one another, and yep. she conceives yep. and bears a son. You've yep. got Noah who gets drunk in his tent, yep. and there's and uncovering, something happened there. Covering of his nakedness, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. Um. You've got uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. You you've got, got Lot and his daughters. Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah and Hagar. Yep. Um. I mean, mm-hmm. you just start walking through the the Bible, mm-hmm. and and here and here's the, what I said to the to the men. As I said, you you don't have to go into every detail yeah. for your five-year-old. Yeah. That's right. But this is the word of God for them too. Yeah. Don't skip these parts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you get to, you know, um, Onan is supposed to raise up a, 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 a son for his dead yeah. brother. That's right. And he spills his seed on the ground. He, re- he refuses. I yeah. mean, your, your children, young children should know that men have seed. Yeah. That's right. And it goes in, it goes in the mommy. Right. And that's how the baby comes. grows, yeah. the, right? right? Just like seed goes into the ground. That's right. Yeah. And, and but it's all, right there in the Bible, and yeah. God's given you the language to use. That's yeah. right. Even at the young age that they are, that's not too much for them to handle, yeah. and you know it's not too much for them to handle because it's in God's word. Right. Um, now you don't need to do the diagrams yet, and you don't need mm-hmm. you know whatever. You don't need to go into further detail when they're young. Mm-hmm. But what you're doing is you're creating categories for them to understand both the goodness of creation, the goodness of their body. Um, how sin messes that up, how, where shame comes from, some of the basic categories of the goodness of marriage 
and the the um, the shame of of sexual sin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and you just walk through it. I mean, you go through the law. You've got adultery. You've got rape. You've That's got homosexuality. Right. Men right. who think they can lay with men. Women yeah. who think they can lay with women. Bestiality. Bestiality. Yeah. Um, you know, some people are so perverse that they they think that you can lay with an animal. Yeah. And, or a dead person. Or a dead person. Mm-hmm. Um, and you and you have and so this is all there in the Bible. Read the whole Bible. You want to protect yep. your children? That's it. Okay. You preach that. This is the body armor That's that God right. has given us. Um, read Genesis to Revelation and then start over again. Right. Talk about it all. Don't be ashamed of any of it. I think, and you just, you didn't, you kind of just gave a plug for the conference coming up um, October 11th through the 14th. That's true. This is basically <laughs> Genesis right here, yeah, right? The politics of yeah. six day creation. Yeah, that yeah, is right. a cause. Uh, that's an, again, Knox Unplugged event on the 13th is just a setup for the Fight Laugh East conference in October because that's At another. The arc co- encounter. That's a, another cosmological shift, yeah. reestablishing that as well. Okay, right. I, w- I want to hit up this next one, which is celebrate feminine beauty, marriage. Marriage and children. We kind of yeah. talked about that a little bit, yeah. but um, just, just yeah. So just go ahead. No, no, I, I'm go ahead. Nat. I just model model the goodness of marriage yeah. and um, and particularly feminine beauty, um, the goodness of marriage and the blessing of children. Model that in your home um, concretely. Um, the Bible commands men to rejoice in the wife of their youth and to particularly rejoice in her breasts. That's right. Rejoice in her body yeah. and um, without being inappropriate. You should be the kind of uh, into your wife that makes your kids feel a little uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Yep. If they're not a yeah. little bit embarrassed, you're not doing yeah. it right. Yeah. You know, they, like stop it, mom. You know, like you know, dad, yeah. don't kiss so much. You know that yeah. kind. Of, but you should hold her. You should kiss her. Yeah. Um, they should know you're into her. And think about this though, not in terms of just like that's what you're supposed to do. This is protecting your children. Right. What you're doing is you're showing them the glory of marriage. That's right. You need to, it needs to be in their mind. It needs to be good. Yeah. It needs to be glorious. They need to see the joy of it. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're sitting deep in their hearts that glory. Amen. So that when they see a woman stripped half naked on a magazine cover, yep. they think, "What? That's messed that's up. Odd. That, that's yeah. weird. That's strange. That's not the way it's supposed to be." Right. And then even there, I, I tell I tell people, don't lie to your kids. Uh, when they when you see them staring at the you know the pinup or the the lingerie ad or the you yeah. know whatever the Victoria's Secret or whatever and don't don't you're tempted to say that's gross yeah mm-hmm. you don't lie mm-hmm. it's not gross it's a feminine body it's a female body yeah. made by God to be beautiful right yeah. so tell them oh that, that's beautiful yeah and it's none of our business yeah. right it's right. It, her her father her brother her husband whoever is supposed to be protecting her yeah. we we don't sell feminine beauty on the cheap like that right. It's right. supposed to be, it's a treasure That's right. for her husband. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. But if you say it's gross, there's a little boy, a five-year-old boy, like, it doesn't it, look doesn't gross to gross. me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's not gross. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. But it's a beauty that's not for you. It's right. not, it shouldn't be cheapened like this yeah. and used like this. But you also want to, um, you know, teach your kids early, early on that um, they're boys. They're made to be a husband and a father. Yep. That's right. Um, they're, they're girls. They're made by God uh, to mm-hmm. be a wife and a mother. Um, that should be categories that are given early, early on. Not something all of a sudden when they're 12 or 13 or going through puberty and adolescence, you suddenly like, ah, I forgot to tell you, you're going to be a dad one day and you're going to be a mom. Right. No, no. You're starting this when they're three. And which means also that you need to give correctives early on. And kids do dumb things. Kids are weird. You know, and you'll have you'll have a four year old boy that says, you know, comes out dressed up in, in his sister's princess dress. And you'll have to say, oh, we don't do that, man. Yeah, yeah that's uh, right. Take yeah. it off. Now, you're a soldier. You're a boy. You got to be a dude. man. Now, don't panic. Yeah. Ah, you know. Like, <laughs> right. My gotta, four-year-old. My four-year-old's a Go back to number train. one. Go back to number one. No, no. <laughs> no, yeah, go back to number one. Yeah. Faith. Yeah. Oh, God wants me to correct this. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. And do it just like you do when they're like, you know, Dad, I decided the sky is green. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, no, it's, no not. it's not. It's blue. <laughs> no, look, I've been here longer than you. I know. No, yeah. no, it's green. No, no it's not. It's blue. Yeah. You know, I, I told the story sometimes. My son, River, he, <laughs> he uh, one day we were doing family devotions and he says, Jesus is God's best friend. And I said, no, he's not. He's God. He says, no, he's his best friend. And I, I, he was like kind of, insane. I'm like, no, he is God. No, no, they're, they're just really good. For, and he was like pretty insistent. He'd been listening to T.D. Jakes. Little, little, ah. <laughs> we had a little Aryan controversy at the dinner table. Yeah. And, and so I just, I just, Cheerfully corrected him and told him, I, I think I cited a couple Bible verses. Jesus said that he was God. He yeah. and the Father are one. Yeah. And, and, uh, and you know, he had a little Aryan controversy for a few minutes, and then he repented, and he's been Orthodox ever since. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he, um, yeah. but, but you just don't panic. Trust yeah. in God. Believe this is from the Lord. Yeah. And do the same thing if your daughter says, I, know, I like wrestling boys, or I want to fight like a man. You, yeah. you say, no, no, you're a lady. Yeah. God made you and gave you a particular glory to be a wife and a mom. You need yeah. to be ladylike. And so yeah. you're not going to be rough and 
tomboy with the boys. Right. You're not going to be a tomboy. Don't say that's cute. Yeah. Don't don't celebrate that. From an early age, give them these categories and, and and train that and bless that. And of course, with that goes, you know, it should be completely ridiculous to the idea of like, you know, five year old saying I have a crush on someone yeah. or, you know, passing notes with somebody in their class saying I like so and so or do you like me circle? Yes or no. Like that should just seem like the most ridiculous thing That's in the world. Exactly yeah. right. Like, like yeah. you're, you're talking about like, you know, buying a car. Yeah. Or, you know, or buying, you know, real estate or starting a business. No, no, that's so glorious and good. I'm going to do that when I'm ready for it. Right. But before that, it should be don't don't play along with those games at all. Yeah. So I, this this next one, I, I have to say this before we jump into the next one. The next one is establish wise house rules. There's 10 of them. I just want everybody to know that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, <laughs> you see what I did they're there. They're written on stone. All right. Yeah. And now they're written on your heart. Yes. Yeah, so do you have an ad to read before I jump to this? I probably should. Uh, you probably I, should, I, should read We're just going to skip the psalm? Um, right, what are we going to do? Because oh, yeah, we got a psalm got, of the day, too. I don't know if you want to, how you want to Well, we're, not, we're getting the psalm of the day in, so why don't you read the ad, okay. and we'll jump to the psalm of the day. Okay. Um, so you can, the, 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 let me just say, Establish wise house rules and then electronic protocols. Those are all there. We'll just leave them yeah, yeah. for, yeah, for, yeah. for, for yeah, folks. Yeah. You guys, um, go check them out. Um, and, the, and the last one's confession, forgiveness, and accountability, yeah, which we've, yeah, we've yeah, talked they're, about. They're all right. there, and um, yeah. there we go. All right. Gravity Jack is a full-service digital agency specializing in the development of virtual and augmented reality experiences, mobile apps, blockchain, and Web3 projects. Founded in 2009... As the first American agency to offer augmented reality, they even patented it. Gravity Jack's digital experiences have been a source of innovation for small business, Fortune 500 companies, and the U.S. military. So get your vision in motion today at gravityjack.com. Uh-oh. It's playing over there. Not playing on here. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, well, we didn't Bluetooth it. You could just like put we'll, it in we'll, later. We'll have to bring it in. Keep okay. it up to the mic. It's coming. It's, the, it's there. It's there. This is uh, My Soul Among Lions, Psalm 15. I, 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 there's a, um, this is a good verse, and I really like um, the one in the contus, but there's no recording of it anywhere. But, yeah. oh, Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart, who does not slander with his tongue, and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt, and does not change, who does not put out his money at interest, and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. Fixed it. This psalm is a lot like Psalm 24, in that it asks a question about who can dwell in God's house? Who can dwell on God's holy hill? And the description is of a blameless man, a perfect man. He does what is right. He always tells the truth. He rules his mouth and his heart and his tongue well. He's a faithful friend. It's striking that it also says that this man despises, it despises the vile and honors those who fear the Lord. The righteous man hates certain people. He also swears to his own hurt and doesn't change. He isn't sharp and stingy, especially with the poor, and he doesn't take bribes to do injustice. And the promise is that whoever does these things will never be moved. Mm. The implication being that you will be the kind of man who dwells in God's tent on his holy hill. Of course, this psalm is centrally about Jesus. Jesus is the blameless man who always does what is right who speaks the truth and does no one any evil. Jesus despised the vile people of his day, and he honors those who fear the Lord. He swore an oath to stand for his people, to represent all of us. And so he received the just judgment that was due to us, and it came upon him. He kept his end of the covenant to the pain, to the hurt, to the death, and he did not change. He gives freely even to the poor because we got that grace mm -hmm. and nothing could ever buy his righteousness. Even though Satan tried to offer him all the wealth of the world, he didn't take any bribes. So Jesus is the one who dwells on God's holy hill forever and he can never be moved. But the crazy offer of the gospel is not merely that it is also the offer to come up and stand with him on his holy hill. In justification, God offers the blamelessness of Jesus to us freely by grace through faith alone as a pure gift. And all those who receive it also receive with it the spirit of Jesus who begins to work all these things into us. In justification, think of it like the capital city of a rebel empire being conquered. 
And then, in sanctification, Jesus begins to progressively subdue our entire life to himself and to his ways. By grace, we are welcomed up to God's holy hill, to dwell in God's tabernacle with him. We have been seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that we can never be moved. Mm. So the application is to work out this, which God has worked into you. Grace is the most fertile soil. Grace is the safest place to be. Mm. This means that obedience in Christ is always a get to, not a got to. Outside of Christ, all of scripture is a condemning law that smells like death. But inside of Christ, all of scripture is life-giving grace that smells like the aroma of life. What are you baking in your heart, in your home, in your family? Mm. Is it the grace of life and relief or is it the reek of death and condemnation? The aroma of grace says you're free, you're forgiven. There is no condemnation. Come on in, come and welcome. But the reek of death is full of accusation, resentment, guilt, shame, and animosity. Which one are you? Which one is your home? Which one is your family? We live in a land that is in desperate need of reformation and revival, but this is the central thing that we need. We need Christ to come and make us new. Mm. Johnny Cash is his mother's uh, favorite hymns album. He's got this song called I Shall Not Be Moved. Oh. And um, it's kind of more based off Psalm 1, um, mm. but it uses the line, I shall be n- yeah. not, not be moved. And it says, though all hell is sell me, I shall not be moved. Jesus will not fail me. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the, wa- by the waters, I shall not be moved. Right. I shall not be moved. You know, that's, my, that's my Johnny Cash. Cheers to the king. Cheers Amen. to the king. You didn't even open yours, Gabe. No. Hey, no. That's all right. All right. No. Cheers. cheers to that. All right. If you're single, get married. If you're married, have you some kids. And if you have kids, go baptize them. Until tomorrow, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go fight, laugh, and feast. This is Cross Politic. Putting off writing that proposal again? Yeah, we've been there. Proposal writing can be tough. It takes work, and if you're not careful, you can set up your company for failure. Well, that's where we come in. Smart Pricing Table is an innovative application that focuses on, well, the pricing table. Instead of a static document and constant back and forth, our platform creates interactive proposals that empower your prospects. Not sure if something is needed? Make it optional. Have complicated services that vary? Let your customer do the work with line item upsells. Have reoccurring services? Easy peasy. With Smart Pricing Table, you can create attractive proposals quickly. And our system is built for reuse, so you can get out of that hamster wheel. Give your customers choice and close deals quickly with Smart Pricing Table. Do you smell that? I hope you're not used to it. I'm talking about that vicious, eye-burning, skin-peeling smell that surrounds all of us. The smell of proxy wars with overtones of the parties in Hunter Biden's photos. Feminism, trans madness, faux pandemic, real panic. Climate tyranny, social media slavery, Epstein's suicide. Fair elections with hints of brimstone charred oak and the Pelosi's stock profits all stewing in a Houston Planned Parenthood's dumpster in August. That is the smell of the thing we once called America, dead and composting. The postmortem on America isn't complicated. First founded by starving pilgrims and slaves, refugees and immigrants crying out to God for deliverance, this nation was pitched like a tent by men and women struggling in the mud and the dust who survived drought and depression and twice left home to bleed and die and save the world. Yes, there was hypocrisy, pietism, self-righteousness, injustice. But this land became strong despite it all by God's grace and by the sacrifice of farm boys crawling up foreign beaches and the sweat of their fathers, tilling soil and feeding beef. American boys tamed the sky and walked in space. We touched the world with our navy, our love of sports and stories, underdogs and barbecue. And now, we touch it all with our rot. 
the greatest nation in history has been laid low by one simple evil. Lies. The deadliest was the first, the lie that our greatness was our own doing, and so many more came after. The lies of secularism, moral neutrality, and self-fulfillment, of feminism and Marxism, the lies of the sexual revolution and evolution, pointless wars and taxation, inflation and a manipulated currency, the lies that lashed out at God, tearing away at our belief in beauty, goodness, and truth, the lies that sought to place our own lusts and the lusts of our masters on God's throne, lies to control, to placate, and to destroy. The storm of lies has reached hurricane force now. Whole states are being evacuated. The deception swirls so fast and furious that the liars don't even bother to hide it. Question, where do lies get their power? Answer, from the idiocy of the deceived. How many lies can a people believe before it's their own fault? One, two, 44,000. Lies lose all their power when the deceived become wise, when their minds are no longer easy to bridle and control, when they learn to think and can seek the truth through any fog, and when they learn to laugh at those lies, the winds will reverse, the fog will clear. Do not despair. These are the times we were given. We are the people God made for this moment. The faithful and the undeceived will rebuild in the ruins, and we will do it singing, feasting, loving, and laughing. We will plant again, and we will harvest 30, 60, and 100-fold. After all, composting empires make the richest soil. New St. Andrews College. Liberal arts for lovers of truth. Laughing at lies since 1994.